As I was messing around with these clamps today, uh, it just reminded me of the story of how I got these clamps. And when I thought about it, I realized that it's a pretty cool story, I think. I think not, is it, not only is it just a cool story, I think it's potentially a life-changing story. So I want you to definitely stay tuned to hear a little more about the clamps, but the most important part, I think, is the story of how I got these clamps. I think it'll help you get clamps or any other tool you need, and it might even just help you build the best guitar that you've ever made. So stay tuned, we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Bills. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. Just in case we're meeting for the first time, I'm a professional luthier. I make handmade guitars and um, I also have the privilege of being able to train other people to make handmade guitars from all over the world through theartoflutheri.com and my online training courses called The Luthier's Edge. I'll put links to that stuff below in case you want to check it out. So let's get down to business in this video today. Um, I wanna tell you a little about these clamps, but like I mentioned before, the most important thing is the story of how I got these clamps, because it illustrates a fundamental principle that is really, I could almost say it's one of the bedrock principles um, of how I build my guitars, of how, uh, uh, let's see, that enabled or empowered me to be able to raise the quality of my guitars like exponentially and really makes life more enjoyable and it makes the process more creative too. Life, the life of being a professional luthier and building guitars in this particular way that I'm gonna share with you, uh, it makes it more enjoyable. So, okay, so what are these clamps? First of all, let's get a little background so we understand what's going on here so the story makes sense. So in case you're new to guitar making, uh, the inside of the guitar, their side, the sides of the guitar are pieces of wood that are bent into shape. There's usually, when I'm building, I have a big heavy mold that goes around the sides that holds that shape in place. I took it off just so you can see this a little better. And inside, attached to these, these outer wood parts is what you see here, these darker colored pieces of wood. And you now the clamps are kind of hiding them a little, but um, in my case, these are made out of Spanish cedar. These are called solid linings. A lot of guitars have uh, strips of wood with little cuts in it that makes it easier to bend and that's called kerfing. Both of those are very commonly used and um, both work well in different ways. I like the solid linings because it creates a more solid, rigid, skeletal framework around the sides, um, which really, uh, when I switched to that, it was a drastic improvement in the quality and the sound of my guitars, the responsiveness, the volume, just across the board, it was a really big improvement. And it really kind of improved some of the building process for me as well. Uh, like when I cut my binding channels to, to inlay the binding, uh, there aren't little cuts like it would be with kerfing. It's just a solid, nice, smooth gluing surface to glue that binding in, which is nice. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about the solid linings and why they're important, why they work, why I love them so much. Uh, there's a guide over on theartoflutheri.com. There's also uh, an even more in-depth version of that guide, and it's really a tutorial in the Luthier's Edge. So if you're a member of the Luthier's Edge, you can log in and check that out. It's really cool. I think you'll learn a lot of important, more important fundamentals there too. Okay, so, uh, so we put linings in here. So what we do is when, after we get the sides of the guitar bent, then we clamp these linings in place while the glue dries. There's a lot of ways you can do that. But the key is to find which clamps best fit your style and the way that you build. When I first started building guitars, I couldn't afford more expensive clamps like this. And I started with um, a combination of these binder clips and also wooden clothes pins. Now, one thing that you can do that works fairly well if you're using kerfing especially, uh, is to use a wooden clothes pin and wrap some rubber bands around it to give it a little added clamping pressure. And that got me through quite a few guitars. Then at Harbor Freight one day, I discovered, discover, dis <laughs> at Harbor Freight one day, I discovered these little, um, 
plastic clamps that you can buy a little pack of these. And these are pretty handy little clamps. And I still use these for real tight curves, like up here in the cutaway. Uh, they work really well because these bigger ones are really powerful. And if you clamp them on a tight curve, they could actually break the side. So um, these little type from Harbor Freight, I think there's probably places on Amazon too that you can get little ones like this and they work great for stuff like that. But these clamps right here were the ones that I knew were gonna help me do my best work and get the type of clamping pressure that I need for the stiffer and more rigid. Um, it's, this, is, this is actually a double layer, the linings that are in here, it's actually a double layer of Spanish cedar that's laminated. So when I decided I wanted these clamps, so here now, now that we got a little bit of background, let's talk about this story that I think is so important and um, I really do think it could change your life because when I implemented what this story represents, uh, it, it really did have a massive and still has a massive impact on my life every single day because I still do what I'm about to tell you. I realized that these were the clamps I needed, but this was, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago when I came to that realization. And at the time, I mean, these clamps are several dollars a piece and um, you need quite a few of them. Sometimes it uh, depends on, on the price that you that you find, but they could be $4 or more for each one of these little clamps. And at the time that was just impossible for me. So when I first looked at it, I was tempted to say, I'll just never have it. There's no way I can spend that much money on clamps right now. So I guess I'll just keep using my clothespins and all that other stuff. But instead I took a different approach and this is a key critical point to understand. And that approach is I took my largest size guitar, which is a 17 inch arch top. I measured the sides and I calculated how many of these clamps I'm gonna need to build my largest guitar. I took a cardboard box and I wrote the number on the side. I don't remember off the top of my head what the number was, but let's say it was 60, I don't know. 60 one inch pony spring clamps. And I wrote that on the side of the box. There was nothing in it, it was an empty box. But that was part of setting my vision, setting my goal. And when that vision became clear, it had a defined number. It had a, I could see it. I knew exactly what it was gonna be like when I had all these clamps. And so it made this anchor point that I could then work backwards from so that I could determine, okay, that's where I'm going. What tiny baby step, I can't get them all at once today, or tomorrow or next week, but what's the tiniest thing that I can do? And so I started by buying one clamp every week and I just kept going. And sometimes I would miss a week, sometimes I'd buy two in a week and I just kept going little by little. Um, there may have even been a month where I only bought one, I don't know. But I just kept taking those tiny baby steps, doing whatever I could going forward and this amazing day came a lot sooner than I thought it would where I bought the last clamp I put it in the box and now it said 60 one inch pony spring clamps and there were 60 pony spring clamps in that box that was once empty. But it, the reason it happened was because there was a defined vision and goal. And to put this in the context of guitar making, it's so important because that's what we do um, well, that's what we do in my course. Uh, there's one of the courses in the Luthier's Edge is called The Art of Guitar Design. And in that course, I just, I hammer on this point that in order to do your best, to build your best guitar and have the least amount of problems and the most enjoyable building experience, you've got to do a full scale drawing of the guitar and work out every single detail on paper because that's what you're doing. You're defining the goal, you're refining, you're building this in your mind and in your heart. And that's what empowers your hands to create it. And then once you have that vision, that guitar fully worked out on paper and built in your mind that you can see it, then it's so much easier and so much more likely that you're gonna reach that by working backwards and figuring out, okay, I, that's where I'm going. What are the first steps I need to take to reach that amazing goal? And then eventually, if you don't stop and you keep taking those steps, just like me with these clamps, there'll come a day where you are holding in your hands 
that guitar that you once only saw in your mind. And that is one of the most amazing, thrilling, gratifying experiences I've ever had in my life. And it never gets old to me. And I love seeing the look in the eyes of my students when they have that same experience. And if I don't get to see them in person, I love reading the email or seeing the pictures that they send me and just feeling that excitement and that thrill and that rush that they have too. And I, and I, and I just relate to it, it just resonates with me. So anyway, um, that's what I wanted to share with you. So um, hopefully you can see why I think it's so life-changing and so important because it's, it's, it can equip you to overcome the obstacles that seem impossible, to set that goal, to keep moving forward and don't let all the little dumb things in life stop you and slow you down. Instead, it will make you stronger and you'll find ways to overcome it. And keep taking those baby steps and you'll reach that goal or any goal that you set. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll put some links to the stuff we talked about below. If you haven't subscribed to the Art of Luthery channel, I hope you'll click the button, hit the bell, and um, that's it for this video. Again, my name is Tom Bills. Um, go check out theartofluthery.com, The Luthier's Edge, and thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.